Hello and welcome to another Writerly Witterings and today is a sad day because I'm sending back these two Conway Stewarts. But I thought it'd be useful just to show some more examples of how they write and final views on the two pens. Cheers! Follow me round here. So here we are back at the working office and my two pens. First thing, the Churchill, I loved. Really good solid feel to it. And part of the solid feel is down to the fact that inside there you might just be able to see the gleam of brass. There's a tube of brass inside the barrel which gives it a really nice weight. Makes it an absolute joy to write with. The other thing that makes it a joy to write with is that nib, which is just stunning. I loved the old Conway Stewart nibs, the two-tone ones, they were beautiful, but that nib works better, I think. And then the other little pen, the Wordsworth. Now I have said before that on camera and on video it shows up as a very right, rather garish red. In your hand it's got dark tones and sort of rose petal pink, pink blush almost, lumps of acrylic showing up in there. And it is just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I never thought I'd like this when I looked at the pictures. The other thing I really love about this is just its size. It is just about the perfect size in the hand. I absolutely adore it, and this is the one I'm going to miss the most. I like the Churchill, but this pen is something I've been carrying in my shirt pocket daily, because it fits. It's just a lovely, lovely little pen. So let's have a quick look at some examples of writing with these two. And I have been using them quite a lot. So here's some examples of work with them. And I must admit, the ink that I thought went best with the Wordsworth was this, Diamine Sepia. Gives a lovely shading, gives a really good feel. It just seemed to flow across the paper beautifully, but look at the shading there, it's absolutely wonderful. Really did work superbly in that pen. Then I tried it in some Leuchtturms as well, and again, both of them worked really perfectly. Now this is the sepia in the Wordsworth. This is the fine nib on my Visconti. You can tell how much I've used this Visconti. The Visconti sign has almost completely disappeared. But um, good bit of shading and so on with that. With the Wordsworth, less shading perhaps than the Visconti with that ink. But that's probably just a a quality of the ink itself. I really liked using it on this paper. It gives a little bit of tooth, but really good. Interesting here, these are both Blue Mar from Rora and Klingner. This is with the Churchill, which gives really good, good colour, nice bit of shading on various letters. And then I put it through my other Visconti with a medium nib too, so they're the same size nib, same as this side. But the Visconti did put down more ink, so you can see there is more shading there. And it actually makes the ink look as though it's darker. And then I return to the Wordsworth. Again, lovely feel, really good variation and so on. Just a lovely nib to use. Then I went back to my William Hanna notebook with this superb, I think it's 110 or 120 GSM paper. So this is the original test I did last week with the medium nib on the Churchill, then the fine nib on the Wordsworth. And both of those Edelstein inks worked really well. But then 
I decided to do a bit of variety and looked at Visconti again. That's the Wordsworth with the red, because I was I was already getting quite hooked on the Wordsworth then. And then I changed the Wordsworth for sepia, and it just felt even better. And this then was the Churchill with the medium nib. And it was interesting because, again, the Churchill must put down slightly less ink than my Visconti. And then just finally on Tomo River, because I have it, might as well use it. I've been using this to write out some new plot ideas using the pens, mainly because I can chop and change from one pen to another on these pages, and it's useful to be able to see. Now, you'll, you'll notice here that you do get shadows coming through on the other side of the paper with the red ruby and also with the sapphire blue but it's less so the other way so wherever there's writing in the sepia it does show through slightly but very very little in comparison I really like the sepia. It works well on this Tomo River. The Churchill with the medium nib and the blue mar shows through very nicely as well. It goes down beautifully on the paper, gives a nice bit of shading. So, quite a lot to take in there. So in summary, as these two pens go back in their box to get sent back to Conway Stewart. I loved them both. Absolutely no shadow of doubt that they are fabulous, fabulous pens. Really gorgeous. But the one that I'm going to miss most of all is this one. The Little Wordsworth. That's a pen I could see myself using every single day of the week very happily for journaling, for making notes in diaries, and for planning books. It's just a pen that will fit in my pocket and come with me wherever I want to go. Now, there are times like this when I surprise even myself. I have to admit I did not think I was going to like the Wordsworth. I thought the colour on the internet looked garish. I thought it looked possibly a little bit too small for my hand. And I've, all, I've loved my Churchill for years. That Churchill feels much, much better because of the brass sleeve, giving it a little bit more weight and balance. But the pen I really am going to miss is the Wordsworth. I just loved it. When it arrived, that gorgeous red colour with the gleams of whatever the flakes are that are shot through the acrylic, just blew me away. It's absolutely beautiful to look at and then when you start writing with it you realise just how good it is. Wonderful balance. Even though it's a much shorter pen it fitted my hand perfectly. It's short enough to go in my shirt pocket. There's not many pens can do that. Even my Visconti finds it difficult with this shirt for example which you can't really see because I'm too close to the camera. It's just... Nope, that's getting closer. That's no good. But I've got a small pocket here, and the Viscontis don't fit in it, neither does my Churchill, but that Wordsworth does. So if I had to give a personal recommendation out of these two, I'd get one of those Wordsworths. There's also the other aspect, from the point of view of a collector, if you're interested in rarer pens, I think there's only six or seven of those Wordsworths left. So you're buying something that is fairly unique, that is unique, and that's going to be increasingly rare. So a good potential investment, possibly, as well as a damn good pen to use every day. And that's my lot. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed that, don't forget there's a Patreon link down the bottom of that means you can link through and help support the channel, which would be very nice. You can put comments down the bottom. I will respond as quickly as possible. You can subscribe, you can hit the bell button so you're told when the next video is coming through, and all those good things. Share it, like it, and everything else. And that way you make me happy. And what more could you want? I'm a happy author. Cheers, take care. I look forward to, hopefully, very soon, bringing you two more Conway Stewart pens to look at. Won't that be a joy? Cheers, take care.